Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you've had a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're going to talk about today is Weight Watchers. I love bread. That is great, Oprah, but this is not about you. So Weight Watchers, which actually now calls itself WW, they introduced a new app last week called Curbo, and they said that this program is designed to, quote, help kids and teens ages 8 to 17 reach a healthier weight. Although the app isn't completely new, back in 2018, Weight Watchers acquired this app, which is based on Stanford University's Pediatric Obesity Program, and what they say is 30 years of clinical nutrition and behavior change research. And after purchasing the app, they spent about a year developing it, adding in features like breathing exercise instructions, a Snapchat-inspired interface, and multi-day streaks to encourage daily activity. Users in the United States can download the app for free. They put in their height, weight, age, their health goals, and those users start logging in the app what they eat. And Kerbal has this traffic light system that is supposed to guide adolescents toward healthy food choices. As Weight Watchers explains, kids and teens are encouraged to eat more of the healthy green light foods, such as fruits, and veggies, be mindful of portions of yellow light foods such as lean protein, whole grains, and dairy, and gradually reduce but still include consumption of red light foods such as sugary drinks and treats. Users can also consult with a personal coach through the app for a fee starting at $69 a month, and this gives them access to 15-minute video chat sessions with Kerbo coaches every week. Kerbo saying that these coaches are specially trained, Kerbo certified, and come from a diverse range of professional backgrounds. Now, at this point, I, I want to make it clear, this is not a, a sponsor spot. The reason we're talking about this today is while there are people that are happy that this app exists, there are also others who are angry or at the very least very concerned. You have parents and nutritionists who are concerned that Kerbo could be creating unhealthy relationships with food at a highly impressionable time for these children. And in fact, some studies suggest that childhood weight loss efforts can lead to or worsen eating disorders and body image issues. Critics have also expressed concerns about specific points on the app. This including the success stories section which shows before and after photos of children as young as eight along with their weight loss totals and testimonials. And around this you're the likes of Kerry Glassman, a New York City based registered dietitian telling Good Morning America, looking at before and after pictures of kids who have lost weight is absolutely something that could lead to children to feel horrible about themselves and it really is a form of body shame. And adding, they could have created an app for children that promoted healthy eating and healthy lifestyle and good health education and information and help children boost confidence. But I feel like the way this app was built is so similar to Weight Watchers and just geared completely towards weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. You also have others criticizing the goals section of the app which includes the options eat healthier, lose weight, make parents happy, get stronger and fitter, have more energy, energy boost my confidence or feel better in my clothes. And Kerbal has stressed that the app is meant to be a family-based approach. But many have been saying that working to lose weight to satisfy family members is damaging and parents handing their children this app can make them feel like something is wrong with them. Nutritionists have also criticized the coaches on the app. Based on staff descriptions on the app's website, the trained coaches include people with degrees in economics, tourism management, and communications. However, on this note, Weight Watchers Chief Scientific Officer Gary Foster told CNBC, if we want to live our purpose of making wellness accessible to all and doing it outside an academic medical center, we're not going to be able to hire pediatricians, dietitians, exercise physiologists, and psychologists. What we do well is take science and scale it, measure the impact to make sure we're living up to our purpose. And we've seen this backlash growing and growing. People have even started sharing petitions to call for the app's removal. We also saw Good Place actress Jamila Jamil jumping on board. She's a vocal advocate for body positivity. She shared the petition as well as tweeting, Oh fuck no, are we kidding? Reading obsession with weight and calories and food at the age of eight? I was 11 when my obsession started due to being put on a diet for being the heaviest girl in the class. I became afraid of food. It ruined my teens and 20s. But with all of that said, I, I do want to pass the question off to you. Do you think that the app and or the idea behind it is good? It's bad? I mean, obesity is an issue in the United States. Also, I mean, regarding children, about 13.7 million U.S. children between 2 and 19 years old are obese, according to the CDC. Although I will say, I know the CDC uses data there based on BMI, body mass index, which is a measurement based on weight and height that many health professionals have slammed as arbitrary and inaccurate. But yeah, I want to know your thoughts and those comments down below. Then, in quickie, light, and kind of uplifting news, we have, it feels like the closest we'll get to a YouTube royal wedding. The most subscribed individual on the YouTube platform, PewDiePie, aka Felix, has now married Marzia. A story that I thought only the YouTube community would care about, but man, it was everywhere. The BBC! even reported on it, although they decided at the end of it to just mention all of his past controversies. Because, you know, of course they did. I'm really only gonna say two things regarding this story. One, congratulations to the happy couple. Although, is it really a YouTuber wedding if you didn't emotionally exploit your young audience and get them to pay $50 for a shitty live stream of it? And by it, I mean a bullshit affair that in no way was actually legal and is just show. Okay, I'm done being petty. And two, as a wedding present to Felix, I will spread the fake news that his old series last week I asked you 
came before yesterday I asked you. I won't actually do that, that was, a, that, was a, that was a bad joke. Anyway, moving on, congratulations. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in awesome, brought to you by nordvpn.com slash phil. And VPNs, if you don't know, much like a firewall protects your data on your computer, VPNs protect it online. That's something that's important to have, yes, on your home Wi-Fi, your work Wi-Fi, but also especially if you're traveling or just out in public, right? Especially airport, hotel, just coffee shop Wi-Fi, you never know who's gonna have access to your information. And so I kind of think of NordVPN as like my digital condom. Because you have to be careful when you're giving it up. And I'm talking about your info. Right? Because part of the issue isn't just that one access point. You have to think of where that access point has been and your information has been sold and then resold and resold until it's in the wrong hands. And with NordVPN, you're not having to compromise or inconvenience yourself. They have thousands of super fast servers in 61 countries, absolutely no data logging. You get 24 seven customer service, fantastic encryption and a risk-free 30 day money back guarantee. And so with all of that said, best of all, if you go to nordvpn.com slash Phil and you use code Phil, they will give you 75% off a three year plan and give you an extra month for free. And that special for you makes it the equivalent of just $2.99 per month. So head on over to nordvpn.com slash Phil, check it out and start protecting yourself online today. And the first bit of awesome today is after today's show, you should definitely check out our brand new deep dive. We took a look at deep fakes, where they are now, where they're going. We even interviewed a few people that are known for the fantastic viral deep fakes that we've been seeing lately. Yeah, I definitely recommend you check it out after today's show. Then, oh, I'm a sucker for this franchise. We got a brand new trailer for Rambo Last Blood. We also got our first official trailer for the morning show where we actually see the actors. We also got a teaser for season three of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. BBC Earth gave us the cutest baby animals. We got another trailer for The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Then Funny or Die gave us a bot review's Avengers Endgame. We also had binging with Babish making pancakes with a giant robot. The infographic show gave us Stranded at the top of Mount Everest. And then finally, for those of you that get pumped about our phil.chrono.gg partner games of the day, get double excited because they're offering something I don't think they'll ever offer again. One, they're offering the well-reviewed Everspace, which is a roguelike space shooter for not the regular $30, but just $4.99 if you use our link before 9 a.m. tomorrow and or while supplies last. So if you're looking for a fantastic space shooter, jump on it while you can, but also exclusively on phil.chrono.gg before 9 a.m. tomorrow and or while supplies last. We have read out the complete bundle, the incredibly well-reviewed racer, that describes itself as a tribute to old racing monsters like F-Zero, Wipeout, Roll Cage, and Pod. The whole bundle would normally sell for $89.62, but if you get in now, you can get it for just $9.99. Enjoy. And if you wanna see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, honestly, everything I cover in today's show, and even more, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about this news around Planned Parenthood and Title 10. And this is an important story because it could impact healthcare for millions of people in America. So for those who don't know, Title 10, which is managed by the Office of Population Affairs, is the only federal program fully dedicated to providing family planning and related services. It generally provides these services to low-income patients, primarily women, at a reduced cost, and it has done so since it was enacted under President Nixon in 1970. Over 4 million people rely on it annually for things like breast cancer screenings, contraception, STI testing, and other wellness exams. It's also worth noting here that Title 10 funds are not allowed to go to providing an abortion, but the Trump administration has now added a new rule to Title 10 that seriously affects its reach. And that new rule states, quote, Title 10 providers are prohibited from referring for abortion as a method of family planning, though exception is made in the case of a medical emergency. And this rule goes on to say, if a woman is pregnant, a Title 10 provider may provide a list of comprehensive healthcare providers, including prenatal care providers, including some, but not the majority, who perform abortion as part of a comprehensive healthcare practice. However, this list cannot serve as a referral for, nor identify those who provide abortion, and Title 10 providers cannot indicate those on the list who provide abortion. And what all that essentially boils down to is that while providers can still give information about abortion, they are no longer able to refer their patients to doctors and practices who provide abortion, and at most, they would only be able to give them a list of doctors who may or may not provide the service. And so following this new change, many healthcare organizations are bowing out of Title X funding, which could have a major impact on their ability to treat patients. And of course, one of the most notable groups exiting is Planned Parenthood, which was the largest provider under Title X, serving close to 40% of the program's patients. They reportedly received about $60 million from the program each year. In some states, Planned Parenthood is the only recipient of Title X funding or as far and away the largest. But even though they are voluntarily losing that federal money, they still plan to stay open. And in a statement yesterday, Planned Parenthood's acting president, Alexis McGill Johnson said, I want our patients to know while the Trump administration may have given up on you, Planned Parenthood never will. Our doors are open today and our doors will be open tomorrow. And adding, our patients come to us because they expect the best information and healthcare available. And we have a commitment to provide that to them. But the gag rule would make it impossible for us to uphold that commitment. At Planned Parenthood, we 
refuse to cower to the Trump-Pence administration. We will not be bullied into withholding abortion information from our patients. Our patients deserve to make their own healthcare decisions, not to be forced to have Donald Trump or Mike Pence make those decisions for them. And so with all that, of course, there's a question, well, what does this mean for Planned Parenthood to stay open without Title X funding? Well, likely they're gonna have to operate with funding from other sources, which could be a huge strain on the group. It also could result in higher out-of-pocket payments for patients, also possibly longer waits for appointments as facilities could end up having fewer employees. And of course, the key thing here is Planned Parenthood is not the only organization withdrawing from Title X. Both Maine Family Planning and the Vermont Department of Health have announced their exit from the program. Maine Family Planning saying if they stayed in Title X, it would fundamentally compromise the relationship our patients have with us as trusted providers of this most personal and private health care, and adding it is simply wrong to deny patients accurate information about and access to abortion care, and it's very possible that other states could soon follow. While they have not officially dropped out of Title X yet, states like Maryland, Washington, Hawaii, Oregon, Illinois, and New York have already threatened to do so. Now, of course, with all this, this didn't come out of nowhere. There are also people that are happy to see Planned Parenthood not getting this money. As far as the reasoning, I mean, it's kind of summarized in a White House statement that argued that this new proposed rule would not cut funds from the Title X program. Instead, it would ensure that taxpayers do not indirectly fund abortion. Right, and so the mindset there is that while that money is not directly going to pay for an abortion, it does help fund an organization that is involved in that process. Even if the money is used elsewhere in the organization because it's still the organization. Now, as far as what's next, Planned Parenthood and the American Medical Association have filed suits to block the rule. And it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Back in July, district courts did take their side, but the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals allowed it to go into effect. And so with that said, the case is still ongoing. There is an oral argument in the Ninth Circuit Court scheduled for September 23rd. Also, the House of Representatives have passed a spending bill with language that would block the rule. But of course, that is going to still require Senate approval and then the president, or unless you have a veto-proof vote. But ultimately, that is where we are with this story as of right now. It'll be interesting to see what we see other states do, what happens in the court. Of course, very interested to know your thoughts on this. And then let's talk about the Amazon Fire and not that one, although very reasonably priced. What we're talking about today, though, is something far more serious. It's also the reason that you may have seen Pray for Amazonia trending on Twitter. Over the last few weeks, fires have been destroying huge parts of the Amazon. And if you didn't know that this was happening, you are not alone. Tons of people tweeting this morning that they were just learning that the Amazon had been burning for weeks. Others pointing out the lack of media coverage around the fire. Some also criticizing Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro for not doing anything to stop the fires. And understand, despite the fact that there has been so little media coverage, these fires are a huge deal. Right now, there are numerous fires in multiple states that are basically burning down the Amazon rainforest totally unchecked. Last week, NASA released satellite images of just a massive smoke layer covering a huge part of the forest, with one NASA researcher telling reporters that the smoke layer spanned about 1.2 million square miles, which I know that's just a huge number, so to give you a little bit of context, that's about one third of the entire United States. The smoke from these fires has also continued to spread, endangering the health of people and animals living in the area, according to local reports, with the smoke getting so bad in some areas that about two weeks ago, the state of Amazonas declared a state of emergency. And just yesterday, people in Sao Paulo, which is all the way on the other side of the country, were sharing pictures of the sky turning black in the middle of the afternoon, which some scientists have attributed to the smoke from the Amazon fires. Now, as far as what started these fires, numerous experts have said that these fires are caused by humans, and we know this for a few reasons. Well, first of all, the Amazon rainforest is comparatively fire resistant because it is so wet and humid. I mean, it is a rainforest after all. And while there are often fires this time of year, they are usually caused by extreme drought. But despite the fact there haven't really been any extreme weather events there that could cause as many fires, fire outbreaks still rose by 70% this year compared to 2018. And secondly, fire is actually used in the Amazon as an agricultural technique called slash and burn to clear land for planting crops. And notably here, slash and burn is also one of the major techniques used in the Amazon for illegal deforestation. And since Bolsonaro took office back in January, deforestation has rapidly increased. And in fact, according to satellite data from the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research, deforestation in the Amazon increased by around 245% in July of 2019. Right, and that's just from comparing it to last year, July of 2018. And according to The Guardian, that is the same as destroying three football fields worth of forest every minute. That is huge. Now, despite the fact that the data came from satellite images, Bolsonaro has described it as fake news. After the INPE reported those numbers, Bolsonaro fired the head of that agency and told reporters, quote, the numbers, as I understand it, were released with the objective of harming the name of Brazil and its government. But as many others have pointed out, Bolsonaro campaigned on opening the Amazon to resource extraction. And since taking office, he has made it a key component of his 
Bolsonaro's economic policy. Until Bolsonaro's election win, protecting the Amazon has been at the core of Brazilian environmental policy for the last two decades. But now, also with the help of powerful lobbyists, he has rolled back environmental protections, ratcheted up access to mining and agriculture by clearing huge sections of forests. And notably, many of the areas that Bolsonaro has opened up to agriculture mining are protected indigenous lands, which Bolsonaro has said are too big for the number of people who live there. According to reports, more than 800,000 indigenous people live in 450 demarcated territories, which cover about 12% of land across the country. Most of those territories are in the Amazon region. Some are entirely isolated. And reportedly, this strategy has endangered both the indigenous populations and the forest itself, especially as it is widely believed among experts and scientists that protecting indigenous lands is one of the best strategies to conserve forests. And this is especially important for the Amazon because the Amazon basin is absolutely critical to stabilizing the global climate. The entire basin spans about 3 million square miles and it includes 40% of the world's tropical forest, 20% of its freshwater, and it produces 20% of the air we breathe. It also has many keystone ecosystems which are crucial to global biodiversity. Right, the importance of the Amazon really shouldn't be understated. And around 60% of this forest is in Brazil, which is a country where a number of the top officials in the government do not believe that climate change is real, and who are convinced that any criticism that Bolsonaro's policies are harming the environment just come from civil society groups and foreign governments that are trying to sabotage the administration. I mean, hell, j just last week, just so you understand the mindset, when asked by a reporter whether Brazil can grow more food and protect the environment at the same time, Bolsonaro responded, it's enough to eat a little less. You talk about environmental pollution, it's enough to poop every other day. That will be better for the whole world. That is the guy in charge. That is the guy who fired the guy who gave him facts because he felt like those facts were wrong. And understand, this is something that doesn't just affect him and the people who voted him in. And there needs to be more people talking about it and people with more power talking about it. But ultimately, this story is also a showcasing that the people can be drivers. Because the people taken to the internet, they're the reason that I and any other outlet now are covering this. But that's where I'm gonna leave this one and of course pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts here? And that's where we're going to end today's show. And hey, if you like this video, you like diving into the news with us, hit us with a like, a subscribe, share the video. Also, if you crave more infotainment, I got two things for you. One, if you wanna check out our extra news video, we did a deep dive on deep fakes. You can click or tap right there to watch that. Or maybe you missed yesterday's show, you wanna catch up, you can click or tap right there to watch that. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.